Hey there, everybody. Welcome to our new edition of Big Brother 23 Live Feed Spoilers. In just one week, the finale is going to be here. A winner will be crowned. Xavier will have all of the confetti falling down <laughs> all over him. My fellow bald brother, Xavier, we can do that. I mean, Derek's also bald, but Xavier, you're better than Derek. <laughs> I'm rooting for you instead. Yeah, we, we are only one week away. Summer will be officially over, even though for us, it already kind of is because the fall season started this week. Yeah, yeah. If you guys didn't know, we have been very, very busy all week. We had our review of the NCIS premiere up on the channel. You could take a look at that. We are just hours away from the Survivor 41 premiere. I am so excited. I cannot wait. It's one of our favorite shows to talk about. It's one of just Matt's favorite shows. I love it so much. The I, you know, there's already been one hair-related joke today when it comes to Xavier, but the Jeff Probst hair jokes, this is going to be, this man's mane, he is almost at, like, full mullet now. Oh, no. I am so excited for that situation, the game. Yeah, so we will have our Survivor video up, you know, shortly after the episode. All right, also hit that subscribe button so you don't miss that. That notification bell will help to make sure that you stay constantly up to date with us. And thank you to everyone who has subscribed because you guys helped us get to 55,000 the other day. We really appreciate all the effort that everybody out there put in to help us reach that milestone. It was really cool. All right, so there's a big brother milestone that is coming here as well. The, the final three, your guaranteed spot in the finale. And Kylan... It ain't looking good, Kylan. Yeah, he he still doesn't know that he's going, which is just shocking to me that he can't figure it out. Yeah, like, you know, because Kylan's not an idiot. He's a, he's a smart enough guy, and I yes. know I know other people are doing their best to not sort of tell him about it and trying to make him feel comfortable, but it's sort of a situation where, and I think this would be the case in any reality show, if you know an elimination is coming... And nobody is, like, outward, or outwardly, like, being really, really paranoid or really, really crazy about it. Wouldn't you think for a moment, why is everybody just kind of hanging out? Why is everybody not losing their minds? Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of understand it with Kylan because he will talk your ear off. So yeah. if he thought that he was going, then everyone there is going to be in for some conversations <laughs> is the way that it's going to go. But yeah. in general, this is not my sort of favorite gameplay where it's, and it's happened all season. Yeah. Like all season where somebody is going and everybody just pretends like they're fine and uh, don't worry about it. Everything's all good. And I'm not really sure what the deal is with all the tippy toeing, except that nobody wants to hear Kyle and talk to them for three hours. Yes. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm not here yet. The feeds haven't been like that crazy, but you know, yeah. I'm not at the point yet where I'm willing to subject ourselves to three hours of Kylan talking. So yeah, I don't blame them, but I think what you said is one of the biggest criticisms of this season and that while there's been some cool things and there's been a great cast, it has felt very much like we don't get a lot of real campaigning this season. Like we're not getting a lot of like real down up against the wire, last minute excitement drama stuff that's usually a big part of Big Brother. Yeah, and it's because they're making everybody comfortable before they're going out the door yeah. so that they, uh, like, they're not campaigning, they're not freaking out, they're not anything. And it's even more interesting because some of the people that have stayed later in the game know this strategy and they know that it's been happening all season long and now that it's happening to them they're just like yeah this is per perfectly normal the funniest <laughs> thing about this particular situation is that xavier has pretty much already said that if kylan was somebody like hannah he would have went ahead and told her but because it's kylan Kylan, you have to go through the sudden blind side. Watch him try to have a three minute, like three hour conversation before he leaves during the live show and like oh Julie has goodness. to come and take him out. Well, it, you never know with Kylan. B expect the unexpected, That's guys. That's right. He likes to talk. Okay. So we also, th this is also somehow still going on, even though I think we know the answer. It's like there's still a little bit of like hemming and hawing over who's going to be the person casting the deciding vote here. 
I know that they want to have the chance to be able to be the person that casts the vote, but that's not exactly like you're you're not going to get full credit for this. Like it still is Xavier's decision on who's going to get to even do that in the first place. He's the one that won the veto. Exactly, which is why Derek sitting around thinking that this is going to be the move because I mean, it seems like he's probably going to be the one to cast the vote. That this is going to be the thing. He's going to win this game. He's going to win Big Brother because Xavier gave him an opportunity to do something he could have easily given to someone else like Aza. Oh, Derek. Derek. De uh, this whole thing. Derek <laughs> is so unbelievably dramatic about this. Like, he's... He's acting as though sending out Kylan from the game is that like he is sending Kylan to an executioner or something. It's just an eviction from a reality show. Calm down. Yeah, no, that's that's really all it is. The funniest thing to me is also, and I think we've mentioned this a little bit before, is Aza basically being like, give me the axe. Like, I will do this. I'll take it on. Yeah, she's ready to rock and roll with this. And in a lot of ways, I feel like Xavier should just give it to Aza because Aza is a, nothing is for sure, but she is much more of for sure bet that she is going to do what he wants, which is just get rid of Kylan. Derek F is a little bit unpredictable. Like, yeah, he could be like, oh, this could be the big resume move. Or it could be the big resume move to keep Kylan in the game. Like, you just don't know, right? You, I, I, I would never put anything past this man to continually try to find weird ways to surprise us that don't make sense to almost anyone else. Because that is, that is Derek's big brother came in a nutshell. In his world, he is Dan Geesling. In everyone else's world, I don't know what he is. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm sorry, Dan, for conjuring you up, Seven. Oh my goodness. There, okay, listen. <laughs> This is a guy who has talked about what that that he has this great argument that he's talking in the game like he's carried Aza to this point, which no, that's all I gotta say. No, no, the neighbor was even just like stop that. Like you know that Big Brother voice when you like break the rules, it's like Blake, stop that. Like Xavier basically did that to Derek. I I'm terrified of the Derek final two speech. Yeah, I mean. It could be entertaining. I mean, last <laughs> season we got Enzo there, who shockingly ended up completely blowing that. <laughs> I actually thought that he was going to do okay with his speech yeah. because he is pretty good socially, but, you know, it was entertaining. Yeah, yeah, it's like... It's sort of like a job interview. You want to go in prepared for the job interview as though you actually knew you had a job interview. And, yeah. like, it felt like Enzo... Woke up like five seconds before and was like, oh, I got to do something here now. I think he really just didn't know he was going to be taken. But anyways. <laughs> yeah. No, all right. So, you know, last night, Aza and Derek talked. And I don't know if this could be called a final two deal. It was sort of more just like him being like, you should take me because it's good for your game. And she was like, yeah, I know. Also, you're my friend and I would want to take you because of that. Yeah, and they're the two jokers that are left. I mean, you know, remember we did have a team twist here at the beginning of all of this. Remember when Frenchie was HOH? Oh my goodness. Remember, oh, that, that is a week we will all forever live in our hearts. Yeah, I mean, Derek F., I think he doesn't really need to sell himself. They have been friends a while. They were teammates. They were also Alliance members. It's just, you know, Derek did kind of screw up a little while ago by basically telling Aza that maybe he wasn't going to take her. I feel like there, there's a good chance Derek is going to live up with that Joker not moniker and he's going to get rid of Aza and go to the final two with Xavier. Oh and then you will be the ultimate Joker, Derek. Yep. This is also assuming, though, that Derek is going to win the final three HOH where, like, the first one's usually like an endurance or something like that. No offense, Derek. I don't think you're winning that. The second one. I wouldn't win that either. <laughs> I okay. Well, let's let's all be honest here. It's, it it probably involves balance, and so I would be dead. I mean, usually, like really short people do well in endurance, but you know, 
I'm a non-athlete. Okay. I'm not going to be winning any of these types of competitions. If it was you and me, you would beat me. Like, there's at least that. I have a. I was. Told. I disagree. You at least play basketball. Okay. Yes, but I don't think that. I don't I think do the nothing. competition is going to be shooting threes. I think it is going to be something about balance, and I will fall, and it will be sad. But okay, you know what? You're not winning part one, Derek. Part two is usually like a memory component or something like that. So then it becomes, okay, is he going to be up against Aza, who is like a really big fan of Big Brother, or against Xavier, who we know is an attorney, which means he had to study for an LSAT, which means he is really good at retaining information. Yep. This isn't going well for you. I can't even see Derek making it to like the random crapshoot part three that never seems fair. But you never know with this game, and we, it, you never, you never know. You never know. They may change up these last couple HOHs to try to make it a little more exciting. I don't know. I don't think that production wants to have Derek in the final two or winning the game, but, you know, it ain't up to them. No, I, I, I think right now they're probably contemplating how to make the third part of the final <laughs> HOH. I, I, I don't know. All the rules from... Uh, Xavier's legal jurisdiction <laughs> yeah. or how to figure out the, no uh final thing we got today is Derek is worried that Azza would beat him because she is likable and she doesn't lie to anyone correct <laughs> also will beat you <laughs> also Derek shouldn't you be worried about the fact that Xavier is pretty much like dominant in every facet of the game correct you can't win this game and I know the Derek F fans are going to come for me but like Let's be honest, guys. Yeah. Like, Aza does have a better social game. People do like her more than him. And Xavier beats everybody. It's just where it is. So, the, okay, here's the last analogy I'll have for Derek's game. It's sort of like, he's like the bad dancer on Dancing with the Stars, where it's like, for the first, like, five or six weeks they're there, You're re it's really fun. Who is it this season? Crease. Yeah, it's totally oh, Doc Crease. No. I, I hope he makes it far because I love Cobra Kai, but he's terrible, but okay. And I know some of you have been asking, we've been getting a lot of comments yeah. about our Dancing with the Stars coverage because we have covered it, you know, for a few seasons yeah. in the past, but it is up against NCIS, which moved to Mondays and we had to make a choice. So here's the announcement. We are not doing Dancing with the Stars this season, which really sucks because I am a huge Cobra Kai fan and John Crease is dancing. Don't worry, he'll probably only be there another week or something. But Just you know, insane. I know, I know. Cobra Kai until I die. Exactly. Okay. See, yeah. I'm Eagle Fang. See, I've watched the full show now. I can make that reference. Earlier this season, I was behind. Okay, so he is Derek is the bad dancer. Where after they're still there, like. I don't know, week five, week six, we've seen this time and time again. And it just becomes annoying that they're still there over people that are more deserving. If Derek had left, like, at the start of the jury, he was funny for a little while. He had his moment. I don't think anyone would be anywhere near as irritated as we are now. Yeah, agreed. All right. We... Although, if John Kreese goes to the end, I'm not going to be mad. I'm not going to be mad either. We're hypocrites. <laughs> that happens. Yeah, we're, um, we're dying on Hypocrite Hill right now. All right. Well, we will dance our way out of this video now. But from you guys, uh, what do you think is going to happen on tomorrow's show? Are we all going to be shocked? Let us know in the comments. And don't forget that we have Survivor tonight. So come back around. If you're watching, we're watching too. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Also, check out our Instagram at Bad and Just TV. We'll see you here next time.